Good morning everybody, welcome to another edition of IndyCar, my name is Gordon Ross, transmitting this morning, this Wednesday morning from Partick. This morning's uh, topic is actually to do with fracking. Now many of you might have thought that fracking was something which just isn't going to happen anymore because there's an outright ban in Scotland on fracking and under the existing legislation of the ban, nobody is allowed to drill a hole in the crust of the, the Scottish countryside and extract shale gas by fracturing, pardon me, using hydraulic pressure. So that's not allowed at the moment. But the NAS company, which is the, the uh, Swiss firm which owns the Grangemouth oil refinery and also the um, ethane gas processing plant um, which is importing shale gas from America at the moment, that company yesterday applied to the Court of Session to lodge an appeal against the ban which they uh, claim is unfair on some legal grounds. Now it's worth remembering that before the ban, the ban was brought in at the end of 2017 by the Scottish Government after several years of having what's known as a moratorium on fracking. Now the moratorium was different because the moratorium basically said that there could be no fracking until such time as the fracking companies could demonstrate to the satisfaction of the government's scientific and safety advisors that the process was safe and environmentally uh, safe as well. Now that they have manifestly failed to do because Ineos, like all fracking companies, know that the, the process of hydraulic fracturing is anything but safe and anything but clean and there was no way that they could adequately demonstrate to the government that it was clean and therefore the moratorium meant that permanently uh, fracking couldn't take place in Scotland. So what's changed? Well, the Scottish Government had a change of heart. There was a lot of uh, media campaigning for a total ban. Now, not all of that media campaigning incidentally was supported, particularly by people like myself, because I felt that the moratorium was a more effective uh, way of preventing fracking than a ban would be. Now the reasons I said that was because an outright ban uh, is created under Scottish law, and in Scottish law it will hold. The problem is that Ineos will now take this appeal to the Court of Session in Edinburgh and say that it's unlawful. The Court of Session will rule against them and say it is lawful under Scottish law, I'm sorry, but we are not going to um, to change that, so your, your fracking ban is still in place. Ineos will then go back to their legal advisors who will say, right, the Scottish Court is not superior to the English Supreme Court, so we'll then take that uh, appeal to the highest court in the land. Now, the highest court in the land is the English or the British Supreme Court, which in theory has uh, the power to, to basically reverse this ban and overrule the Scottish Government's decision because the Scottish Government is still effectively subservient to British law. British law overrules it. And so because of that, if any of us do what I think they're going to do, um, they will finally go to the, the Court of Appeal, and the, they'll go to the High Court, they'll go to the, the Supreme Court eventually, and they will win because the British government wants fracking, remember. It's the Scots people and the Scots government who don't want fracking, but we can be overruled by Westminster. Now, this development today about Ineos now challenging the ban and this, the SNP government having put a complete ban in place must have known that Ineos would do this and therefore they've done this on purpose. The Scottish government has made the ban permanent because they want Ineos to challenge it and they want them to take it to the Supreme Court just as we are thinking about voting for independence it's suddenly going to be a threat to the people of Scotland. Fracking, believe it or not, can happen anywhere in the central belt of Scotland. They can drill under your house, under your town, under your children's schools, underneath even some of the, the finest water courses in Scotland, with all the risks of contaminating the drinking water, of dirt and filth and noise and pollution entering the countryside and ruining the Scottish countryside forever. And it, as that risk begins to sink in this year, as it becomes more apparent that any of us are going to go for this and win it, there is then the threat 
of fracking almost immediately because the British state can overrule the Scottish government and the Scottish uh, um, ju judiciary. And so because of this, there will be even more pressure put on previous no voters to think again because the only way that the ban can be enforced in Scotland is if Scotland is a sovereign state and then that ban can be permanent and no fracking can take place. But if you add this, uh, this new development into the list of concerns that people have at the moment about Brexit, about the continuing notion of hyper-austerity, the continuing and ongoing sleaze and corruption, the, the, the paedophilia, the cover-ups, and all the rest of the, the things that are happening with the Tory government 400 miles away in another country, people are going to come to the conclusion that they don't particularly want to continue with that anymore. That it would be quite nice if Scotland could just stop fracking and stop any of us in its tracks. And the only way to do that then would be to vote yes in the next referendum. It's another weapon in the armoury that we have to fight to gain control of our country's resources again and to allow what we think and what we want to happen to our country to happen and not what somebody 400 miles away with a completely different agenda who's only interested in making money for themselves. Uh, we don't have to accept what they want us to do anymore. And so this is where we're at at the moment. And I think that as this year wears on and as this fracking uh, issue wears on and becomes more and more uh, of a threat to us, that more people in Scotland, particularly in the central belt, now remember fracking, once it starts under your homes, your insurance companies will not underwrite you for subsidence. Because if you buy a house in a fracking zone, uh, in, in a, an area of the central belt which is riddled with old mine workings, with uh, reservoirs and water courses, underground mine workings that aren't even on any charts. The chances of uh, small earthquakes, the chances of subsidence are very, very high. So your insurance rates on your home, home will skyrocket. But not only that, you might not even be able to get insured in some areas where fracking takes place. Then there's a problem of water pollution. Do you want your drinking water poisoned with the chemicals and the mud from the fracking process? Do you want your drinking water filled with ethane gas to the point where your water will actually catch fire if you light it? These are other risks attached to fracking and they're real risks. They've been proved, there's evidence, um, photographic and visual evidence from all of the United States where this has happened, where fracking has wrecked the countryside, poisoned the water and ruined the local landscapes. So those of us who are perhaps um, shall we say, not normally associated with voting for independence, those of us who are perhaps uh, are more middle class office jobs with nice houses in the commuter belts of central Scotland are going to have to look and think, well, do I want fracking under my house? Is there any way to stop this? And of course there is a way to stop it, but the only way to stop it now will be to vote for Scotland to separate from the UK so that it can stop fracking so that it can control all of the natural resources that we have, so that we can also insist that things like oil rigs, which at the moment the oil companies are seriously suggesting we should just leave them in the North Sea, rather than have them decommission and take them away, they're wanting to just let, let them rust to bits and then fall into the sea and, as they say, to become natural reefs, when what they really mean is we can't be bothered cleaning up the mess that we've made of the sea. Scotland will be able to stop fracking if it's independent, but it can't do it if it's part of the United Kingdom, and it especially can't do it with the Tories in charge of the United Kingdom, because many Tories have got shares in companies like Quadrilla, which is actively campaigning to frack everywhere in the UK. They're already drilling in the north of England, remember, despite all of the the bans uh, and the moratoriums that they had there and all of the local council planning consents that were refused and all the demonstrations, they've still drilled in the north of England. And it's already going to start polluting the land there and they haven't even found any gas yet. So that's the issue of fracking. I want you to think about that and if you're talking to friends and neighbours about fracking, introduce it as a subject now.
and say to them, did you know that INEOS is going to challenge the ban on fracking in Scotland? And only because we're still part of the UK, INEOS can actually get the thing overruled and you can have fracking done under your house, under your schools, under your towns. And you cannot stop it unless Scotland becomes independent. Now, how do you feel about that now? And see what they say. Because that's the truth of the matter. And the Scottish Government knows this. If they had kept the moratorium, then fracking wouldn't happen at all. It couldn't because there's no way that the fracking firms would be able to prove it was safe. By placing a ban on it, they've made it possible for Ineos to overturn it and they've made it possible for Ineos to go to the High Court or the Supreme Court in London and have the whole thing overturned so they can start fracking. And so it is a move by the SNP designed to encourage us to think about the future of the country and to encourage us to consider whether it is worth the risk of allowing fracking when we could quite easily just put a cross in a box that says yes to independence and know for certain that no fracking is ever going to take place. I'll leave you with that thought. I'll be back again tomorrow. I look forward to seeing you both on YouTube now and on Facebook. I'll speak to you soon. If you have any comments about today's show or if there's any inaccuracies or anything you want to add, please let me know in the usual way by messaging after this show. Bye for now.